Good morning and welcome to Mass Memorial CME Sunday School for September 4th, 2022. And this is Sister Sharon. We are on our fall quarter, A Living Faith. This is from the International Sunday School series of lessons. Our lesson is the call of Abram. Our key verse, then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Genesis, the 12th chapter, the seventh verse. Our lesson scripture is Genesis 12, one through five in verse seven and Genesis 15, one through seven. I would do Genesis 12, one through seven and Genesis 15, one through seven. Let's look at some background. So we are in the first book of the Bible. We're in Genesis and the name means origin. This book was written by Moses as well as the other four books in the Pentateuch. So that's the first five books of the Bible. So that would be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Genesis covers more history than the rest of the Bible as it starts in the beginning and goes until the death of Joseph in Egypt about 1800 BC. Today, we're going to talk about Abram, and Abram is the original name of Abraham. So let's have a little background on Abraham. So he was also known as Abram, and that name means exalted father. And then God changed his name to Abraham, which means father of many or father of multitudes. His wife was Sarai, and then her name was changed to Sarah. His original home was Ur the Chaldeans. He was the son of Terah. He was in the lineage of Shem, Noah's son. He was the patriarch of Israel. And before I say this last one, he also, um, when he says his original home was Ur the Chaldeans, if we look in the book of Joshua, it actually tells us that um, his father's family did not believe in God. They, they, they worshiped other gods or G, lower, D, lower G, G-O-D-S. And so this is very amazing that God, God, capital G, the one and only living God called him. So you can find that verse about Abraham and his family in Joshua 24, that they, they worshiped idols before God called them. And so then the last thing I have is that he became the friend of God. And you can find that in Isaiah, the 41st chapter, the 8th verse, 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, the 7th verse, and James, the 2nd chapter, the 23rd verse. And I have the quote for you from James, the 2nd chapter, the 23rd verse. And it says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. So that's our background. Let's get into our lesson from Genesis 12, 1 through 7 and Genesis 15, 1 through 7. So starting with Genesis 12, 1 through 7, the first part I just called go. So the first verse says, now the Lord has said to him, excuse me, now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. So remember, he had not, they had been um, worshiping idols and being the one and only living God, um, um, he hears his voice and he tells him to get out of his country um, from your family, from your father's house to a land that I will show you. So he didn't show him the land first. He said, you need to get up and go. And so um, I use Isaiah 6, 8 when Isaiah was called. And it says, where it says, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I say, here am I, send me. And I use that because it's just another thing where God says, go. God's asking who will go in Isaiah but in Genesis 12, he's telling Abram, you need to get out from your family's house. Remember, his family worshiped idols. You need to get out of this place where they're worshiping idols. You need to get, also you just clean, you know, you need to go where I tell you. I have promises for you. Um, I have things for you, but it's in a certain place and walk in faith and go and find out what I have for you. So you need to go. So then God makes a promise. He says, I will make you a great nation. So he said, I'm telling you to go, get out of your father's house. And when you go and I show you where I'm going to take you, then I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now that in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That leans toward Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is from the lineage of Abraham. And so therefore, because we are saved um, by Jesus Christ, then all of us can be blessed. 
But just the idea that God makes this promise to Abram, he says, um, I'm going to make you a great nation. So at this time, it's just him and his wife, Sarai. They don't have any children. You know, he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. And he says, and I'm going to bless you, you know. Um, and he says, and I'm going to make your name great. And we're still talking about his name. So his name is great. And he says, and then I'm not only am I going to bless you, that those who do bless you, I'm going to bless. And those who curse you, I'm going to curse. And we see that even when we look, study, um, and we look at the Jewish people because um, we see that God has blessed those who have blessed them and, and cursed those who have cursed them. And likewise for us. So it says in Numbers 23, 19, I quote this a lot. I think everyone might know it now. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do or has he spoken and will he not make it good? So God just told Abram, I'm going to bless you. Everyone that blesses you, I'm going to bless. People who curse you, I'm going to curse. I'm going to make you the um I'm going to make you a great nation and I'm going to make your name great. So God said it. That settles it. God is not a man that he should lie. So then, what does Abram do? This is what God tells him. So then in verse 4 through 6 it says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So he, so when God made this promise, Abram was 75 years old. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh, and the Canaanites were in the land. So in obedience, he got up and he went and he ended up in, in the land of Canaan. And so he was 75 years old. So sometimes we act like, oh, I can't do that because I'm older now. But God spoke to him when he was 75 and told him, change a change in life plan. Um, um, an, another turn in your journey. And so um, whether you're young and God is telling you it's time to get up and go or whether you're older and it's God is telling you it's time to get up and go, um, we need to obey God. And that's what Abram did. So God told him to get up and go. Abram got up and went. He got up and went. Now, Lot did go with him. And I know the scripture says that he said, get away from your father's house. And Lot is his nephew. Um, and he went with him. So I'm not sure whether Lot was supposed to go, but Lot did go. But the idea was Abraham did what God said. He got up. He obeyed. It says in Deuteronomy 11, 1, therefore you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always, everyone. So we need to obey God. Trust in, there's a song, trust and obey, because there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. So Abraham trusted God because God told him what he was going to do, and then he obeyed God. He got up out of his father's household. He departed from Haran, even at being 75 years old, and he took everything that was that was his with him. Luke eleven twenty eight 28 says, but he said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And this was Jesus speaking. Some people were talking about that blessed would be Mary and um, his mother. And Jesus was saying, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And so then Abram heard a word from God and he kept it. And so then he was blessed. Verse 7 in this chapter, in Genesis, the 12th chapter, I call this part exceedingly abundantly, because then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So remember, he had just walked through this um, place where the place of Shechem, as far as the Terebinth, to Yamore, and he was in the land of the Canaanites. And then God tells him when he gets there, because remember, he didn't really know where he was going. He just keep traveling. But he says, then God appeared, the Lord appeared to him and said to your descendants, I will give this land. So then he's like, this is where you're going. This is the land I'm going to give. And then Abram built an altar to the Lord. So in other words, he worshiped, you know, we've been talking about pastors been talking to us about worship and about even the other week, we talked about heavenly worship. And just this idea that when God told him, showed him where he's going to be, he built an altar to the Lord there. 
And one of my commentaries said, in the sense that was showing his citizenship was with heaven. His citizenship was with God. He was going with what God said. So God will do exceedingly abundantly because he showed him all this land. He said, this is what I'm giving you. Remember, I'm making your name great. I'm making you a great nation. And so we need to realize that God does exceedingly abundantly far beyond what we dare ask or think. And that's what Ephesians 3, 20, 21 says. It says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. We need to realize God is God. And we're going to say that again today. God is God and God does exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or even think about. So even for Abram, you know, he got up to go, but he didn't realize how, even though God said, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to make you a great nation. He brings them to this great land and says, this is going to be all for your family. All of this is going to be for your family. And that's where he went. And, and, and so then Abram worshiped. He built an altar to worship. Now we're on Genesis, the 15th chapter, verses one through seven. And starting with the first verse, I call this part God, our safety and satisfaction, our protector and our provider. So Genesis 15, one says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceeding great reward. Now, this is the first time that commentaries say that fear not is mentioned in the Bible. Now, depending on uh, what commentary you read, some people say fear not is actually mentioned. Those words, fear, fear itself is mentioned over 500 times in the Bible, just the word fear. Then they say fear not. Some people say it's mentioned 365 times. Now, I have not counted it. So in other words, that we should not fear any day. OK, because 365 times it's mentioned in the Bible. But it is mentioned, you'll see fear not, you'll see fear God, you'll, you'll see do not be afraid, okay? And it's over and over, that theme is over and over in the Bible. But this is the very first time that God says fear not in the Bible. So here it says do not be afraid because I'm using New King James Version, but otherwise in the King James Version, it would say fear not, Abram, I am your shield, your exceeding great reward. So it says in the third division of Psalm, the third verse, but you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. So that shield means that God is our safety. He's our protector. And so it's the idea that a shield, like in battle, covers you, keeps you safe from um, the weapon, the, the, the arrows that are coming at you or whatever they're, they're throwing at you. You have that shield to protect you. Even we know in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, um, part of the armor of God that we're supposed to have on every day, part of that armor of God is actually the shield of faith. So having faith in God, that's, that's our protection. It protects us. And then even shields weren't necessarily small. They had large shields and small ones. Okay. A buckler was a small shield. A shield itself was considered quite large. And so it could use to be um, protect yourself and to completely cover you, but also to push away the enemy because it was such a large shield. And so think of God that way. Not only he protects us, but he also pushes the enemy away. In the 18th division of Psalm verses one through three, it says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. And there's a song that goes that that goes with oh, a song that is built off of the 18th division of song that says, I will call upon the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. And then it keeps going. But just that's built off of the 18th division of Psalm. But here we see that it says that God is many things for us, but he is our shield. He is our shield. He is our protection. He is our safety. It says in the 84th division of Psalm verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold 
from those who walk uprightly. Okay. And so again, look at that part. It, he is our sword. I mean, he's our son and he's our shield. So he's our protector, but he's also our great reward. Okay. Because he says exceedingly great reward. And it says in the 84th division of Psalm, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. So he will bless us, but also he is our blessing. He is our blessing. The fact that we have God, God is our blessing. He's our great reward. And also what you need to know is right before this in chapter 14 of Genesis, um, when um, Ab Abram was going through a, a part of the land and someone there was going to give him all these riches, he was going to give him you know, a whole lot. He asked for some um, provision along the way, but he was going to give him all these riches. He said, no, I'm not going to take that. He said, because I don't want it to be that you say that you made me rich. OK, I don't want it to be that you gave me wealth, um, that you can claim that, you know, he says, basically, he's saying, God, God's got me. Um, so I don't need to take this from your hand. So that's what happened in Genesis, the Genesis 14 chapter. So you might want to go back and read what happened in Genesis, the 14th chapter. So then when he's coming in here and he's saying, fear not, you know, in other words, God's saying, I've got you. You know, he says, fear not. I'm going to protect you all along the way. And he says, and also I'm your exceedingly great reward. Remember, he already had promised him. So God is our provider. He's our provision. He's our satisfaction. He's our safety. And he already had promised him, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. And so even though sometimes people want to take claim um, for blessing us, oh, I, I helped him get that job. Oh, I helped him get that. But we need to remember ultimately that God is our safety and satisfaction. God is our protector and our provider. God is the one that blesses us. God is the one that rewards us. You know, and one minister was talking about even if you're saying, oh, I got food and you say, well, you got the food from where the grocery store and the grocery store got it from where um, the manufacturer or the producer and the producer got it from where the farm and the farmer got it from where the, the cow, you know, and, or whatever um, creature or whether it's the crops. And then the, then that came from the seed. And then who gave the seed? It still comes back to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So we just need to remember that God is our exceedingly great reward. So then, um, remember, Abram is 75 years old. And God is telling him, you're going to be a great nation. But he's looking at the fact that him and Sarai, they, they don't have any children. And so Abram says, so Abram decides to ask God questions. And he says, so Abram says, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Then Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. So a lot of times, you know, just like we need to have a plan for our future. Abram had a plan. He was a wealthy man and it, it only would go to their sons, but he didn't have any sons. And so what he did was basically um, his servant, Eliezer, okay, um, he was going to become his heir because there was no one else um, that he had no children. So him and Sarah, I had no children. And so he's saying, um, God, you're saying you're going to make me a great nation, but, but we're childless. Um, and so he asked God a question. And everyone, I think it's just, I don't have extra scriptures on this, but it's just the idea that it's okay to ask God a question. Just remember, have a reverential fear of God because we want to understand. And I did think about putting where it says, God says in Hebrews, come boldly to the throne of grace for help in time of need. But we need to remember he's our father. He loves us. And so sometimes we have a question. Sometimes we don't understand. And we just need to realize that sometimes God will answer our questions with yes. Sometimes God will answer our questions with no. Sometimes God will answer our questions with an explanation. But sometimes he says, trust me, have faith in me. You know, and so we we don't necessarily say we get the answer. OK, but that doesn't mean you can't ask the questions. Everybody ask the questions if you need to ask the question. He loves us. OK, we are his children. And so we could ask Abba. Now we're going to verse four and five. And I say I call this God uses auditory and visual learning. You go, hmm. But he says, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir, but, but one who will come from your own body 
shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Now, there's different learning styles, okay? Um, there, some people say there's eight, but there, there are at least four, okay? And one of them, some people learn better by hearing, okay? So one of the things God did was God spoke to Abram so he can learn from hearing, he said. So he said, the word of the Lord came to him and he said, this one shall not be your heir, but who one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. So first he heard God, okay? Um, and so that's auditory um, learning, okay? So he had to learn it. He was That's how God was teaching, by speaking. And then the second thing God did was he was teaching by showing him an example, okay? So visual learning. Some people need to see, okay? Um, there's also people who need hands-on. Um, there's also people who need to read and write down what they see, okay? But is the actual idea here was God said, now look up toward heaven. And this is the second time in Genesis that he, he said this to him. He says, and, and he says, count the stars if you're able to. Another time he says, look, look at the sand on the, on the seashore, you know? And he said, like, can you count the, the little individual pieces of sand? He said, so shall your descendants be. You know, so he gave him a visual. He gave him, he spoke it you know, and he also gave him a visual. So then it says in verse six, and he that's able and believed God and he accounted to him for righteousness. So he had faith in God. Hebrews 11, one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He didn't see it. But at this moment, the, um, Sarai and Abram are childless. He didn't see it but he believed God and it was give, he was given credit for righteousness because down the line, Jesus still needed to come, you know what I mean? Cause we're saved. Um, we're saved through by grace through faith. Okay. But it's the idea that God credited to his account for righteousness, for right standing with God. And then Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then remember God spoke to Abram and he told him, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. And he also told him, even though he gave him a visual with the stars and he gave him a visual with the sand, look now toward heaven and count the stars you've able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. So he spoke to him, the word of God. Okay. And then Abram heard it. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So again, verse six, Abram believed the Lord and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And then the last verse in our lesson comes from verse seven of chapter 15. And I said, God, remember who he is. Because then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. Isaiah 45, five through six says, I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to a setting that there is none besides me. I'm the Lord and there is no other. So everyone, we need to remember who he is. We need to remember who he is. I know sometimes um, parents, if their child is going off, you know, especially this is the beginning of the new academic year and kids, young people went to college and parents might have gave a speech that you might be going away, but remember who you are. You know, and I even have the shirt from um, Lion King where um, they told um, Simba, remember who you are. And so we and part of that was Simba remembering who he was. He had to remember his um, his dad, Mufasa, you know, and who he was. And so now we need to remember God, our father and remember who he is. OK. And so even when we're blessed it's because God blesses us. And so he's like, I'm the Lord. He says, I'm the one that brought you out of, or I'm the one that brought you out of idolatry. He's the one that saves us, everyone. He's the one that brought us out of sin. You know, he's the one that blesses us. You know, he's the one that has given us an inheritance. He's the one that has sealed us. He's the one that will come, um, God will come again for us. Um, Jesus will come again for us. So we need to remember who he is. Okay, and then even when we're, we're blessed, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that God gives us the power to get well. Okay, so it's not, you know, I pull myself up from my own bootstraps. Nah, 
you know, and then sometimes we, God, God can have other people help us, but even that those people, again, they're not the source. We need to remember who the source is. There is one source and God is the source. Okay. He's the one that blesses us. He's the one that keeps us. He's the one that takes such very good care of us. He is Abba. He is father. He is creator. He is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. He is God. And besides him, there is none other. So in summary of this lesson, from this is an excerpt from With the Word by Warren Wiersbe. It says, God is our protection and provision. So we need not fear the enemy without or our feelings within. God is the great I am, and he can meet every need. With him, we have everything. Without him, nothing we have is sufficient. This is our lesson for this Sunday on the call of Abram. Be blessed, love in Christ, Sister Sharon.